I'm not. I think I know my place in the ping pong world. <laughs> ready when you are. And ready. <laughs> All right. Hope whenever you're ready. Perfect. All right, everyone, welcome inside the Virtual Media Center here at the LPGA Drive on Championship at Crown Colony. I am pleased to welcome Allie Ewing. If there's any questions for Allie, please let me know in the chat function here. And for anyone in here, um, you can just tap me on the shoulder. We'll be using the microphone right over here to my right. Um, but Allie, I just want to get started. This is the fourth Drive on Championship, the fourth edition. And technically, you are a past Drive on Championship. What does it mean to you to see this type of tournament in its fourth edition? Yeah, I think it's great just with uh, the LPGA is obviously um, taken drive on and ran with it. And it's been a great addition, I think, to our campaign and just um, just overall just encouraging people to drive on um, and the LPGA just supporting that and adding some tournaments like this uh, in our fourth fourth edition, as you're saying, it's it's fun. And we've got some unique stuff going on this week that's been a cool player experience for everyone. So, yeah, I'm excited. When you look back on your first win on tour at Reynolds Lake Oconee, being able to be a drive-on championship, your career and life has kind of been speedballing through um, since that win. Uh, when you reflect on that win, what do you remember the most? Well, I remember it was my birthday. Um, my parents were there, which was just great, especially considering COVID had completely shut them down from coming to mm -hmm. really any event. So um, that it was pretty close to home. Uh, so it's... It's kind of crazy to reflect back on, on it, but it certainly was a huge confidence boost for me in where I am now versus where I was then. Since then, another win um, at the match play um, and also a Solheim Cup appearance. And now we're starting the 2022 season. Just how are you feeling as you come into another season on the LPGA Tour? Yeah, I'm excited. I think uh, last year I got really tired at the end of the year. So um, I think for me personally, it's just kind of being being able to mentally take myself away from things uh, when I'm home and really just appreciate home. Um, so, so for this year, I feel like my golf game is in a good spot. Um, and I feel like to just jump over some mental hurdles for me is – is to maybe be where I am and uh, I miss home, I get homesick. Um, so for me, it's just kind of mentally staying on top of being where I am, being excited of where I am. And I've, I've been excited to be back and competing uh, these last two weeks in Florida and then having one more before we kind of uh, take some more time off uh, coming up. But it's, it's been great and I'm really looking forward to 2022. Did you approach this off season any differently? I know you said that you you get a little bit more homesick than maybe in the past years. Yeah. And mentally, you're kind of trying to get over those kind of hurdles. What do you do to prepare for that as we embark on a season like this? Yeah, I think just uh, just really appreciating my home time, uh, whether that's you know spending time with my husband, his team, uh, my parents, my grandparents, which I'm still blessed and lucky to have all four of them. Um, just just taking in the time at home and for me that was you know getting a lot of rest uh, I did some hunting with my husband um, and I'm sure I binged some tv shows uh, made a nice indention on my couch for a little while uh, <laughs> but yeah it's, it's just kind of being where I am and uh, I love being home and I also love competing on the LPGA so it's just finding that happy balance for me and Coming back to this week, the Drive On Championship, you are entering this as a newly elected player director. Uh, so this is a lot more than just, I feel like, on-course activities for you. What has that experience been like as you've kind of watched other players that have been in that role before and you've started gearing up for those board meetings and those long days as well as preparing for a golf tournament? Yeah, uh, we started with some board meetings at the beginning of the week. Um, and for me, it's just a, a place where I can hopefully provide um, an avenue for players to board um, and just be a spokesperson for our tour. Um, I've always tried to see the bigger picture um, of the golf avenue where, you know, I know it's more than just showing up to a golf tournament, teeing it up on Thursday, getting my prep in. Um, I know there are a ton of things that go on behind the scenes. So for me, it was just kind of trying to jump into a role where I could truly understand and appreciate that. And then also just be a representative for our tour. Um, and I guess I'm technically like a month in now, uh, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying learning and hopefully I can just be uh, a good asset to our board. Amy Olson said it's like wearing two hats this week. Absolutely. 
<laughs> you have to know when to take one off and put the other one on. So it's just you kind of have to know your role in both and uh, kind of be able to separate the two. All right, Steve, I'll go to you. Since 2020, you've gone from someone who's trying to break into the winner's circle to now winning in two consecutive years. How does that change your goals and your mindset um, when you come out to an event? Yeah, I think for me, it's it's just kind of settling into who I am. I know I think last year I talked about that in a press conference and just um, not really feeling like I have something to prove uh, to people, even though um, technically we shouldn't feel like we have anything to prove, but we do as golfers and professionals. I feel like we, we want to tee it up and we want to showcase that we're one of the best in the world and the best way to do that is to lift a trophy at the end of the week. And um, just feeling like I've done that, I feel like I don't have anything really to prove. It's more competing because I love it and uh, just trying to, to enjoy it, grow the game, and put my best foot forward, my best effort forward every week and hope that, you know, I can contend. I can uh, – my goals are set really high on majors this year. Um, I want to be um, in contention at majors. And uh, so I'm placing a lot of emphasis in just trying to – uh, take it one week at a time and have, you know, have my best stuff every week if I can. You know, you, you speak of majors. You were in the final group on the final day last year at the uh, Chevron. Mm -hmm. um, how had how does that experience propel you uh, for this year? Yeah, it does. And I, I feel like um, I'm confident in my game that I'm equipped to play majors well. Uh, golf courses are typically, you know, more difficult. They require you to strike the ball really well. Um, and I'm fully aware that when I play my best golf, it's because my short game is better than my average of what short game is. So I'm placing a lot of emphasis on short game this year and just uh, trying to be more confident in, in my putting and training. I've always trained uh, really hard, but maybe just trying to have a shift in mindset to perform at a higher level, uh, putting and chipping. So... Um, for me, just approaching the majors is, is being confident and learning from my experience playing in that final group at Chevron uh, last year and, and hoping that the more I put myself in that situation, the more you know comfortable I get. I've had a couple of caddies out here say the vibe this week feels a lot like Lake Oconee. Do you get that same sort of sense? Um, I, I can certainly, you know... I, it's a, it's a good way to trick myself into feeling that vibe. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think the just the drive-on experience itself is kind of uh, the atmosphere that it creates. It's, it's kind of unique because it is a kind of an LPGA-run tournament, uh, which is maybe different than, you know, our sponsored-run tournaments. So um, it has a great feel. It feels just very, you know, everything is kind of tight-knit. Uh, with with it being streamed on Peacock, uh, members only kind of as fans, uh, so it does kind of feel like a smaller atmosphere, which is which is unique. Um, and sure, I can create some vibes of Lake Oconee if I need to. And the final one from me: um, a couple of weeks ago, we announced Epson is taking over mm -hmm. the uh, the Symmetra Tour um, and really putting a lot more emphasis in that tour and bringing a lot more exposure. You're a veteran. You're one of the faces that uh, that they like to point to. Um, what does it mean to have a worldwide company like Epson involved in that tour? Yeah, it's great. And uh, Mike Nichols, what he's done with the Epson tour and just the developments that he's had uh, as he's been in that position has been incredible. And having a company like Epson step step up in, in more ways than just one to, you know, try to put ambassadors in place as they – progress from Epson tour to the LPGA you know they have that money set there for them um, trying to reduce the entry fees just what they've stepped up to do for players that are just kind of getting their feet underneath them I think it's incredible and it's it just goes to show you that it's not just the LPGA being elevated it's the women's game as well a question from the Zoom. It's kind of a two-parter here. Okay. Um, last week in Boca, you finished T11 in some tough conditions. Uh, what did you learn about your game last week uh, that you're bringing into this week at Crown Colony? Yeah, um, Lake, Lake Nona, we had some cold, adverse conditions on Saturday, Sunday, and I didn't, I didn't play as well as I wanted to. Um, part of that was just knocking the rest off, which I was fully aware of. Um, but I was super happy with how I handled myself uh, mentally, and obviously I had to produce good shots on Saturday with with the wind and the cool that it was um, at Boca Rio. So um, for me, it was just kind of you know putting on the grind hat and knowing that it's not going to be easy and overcoming you know mental and and just knowing what shots to hit in the right situations. Um, so for me, you know, I wasn't I probably wasn't 
sure how I was going to perform when I came out, uh, just because I took a good amount of time off, which I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't really know what my game would look like. Um, so for me, seeing a T11 in the second week out, you know, that's pretty exciting for me. And knowing that my game, despite taking, you know, some time off, isn't too far from where it needs to be. So it's exciting. And coming into this week, um, I hope that I can put together some good golf uh, as like I did last week. That T11, as you said, was a really good sign. You talked earlier with Steve about being in contention in majors. Are those your big goals to just be in contention throughout this year? What have, what are some of the goals that maybe you've set for yourself throughout this next season? Yeah, I think just overall the consistency. Um, the the more times and the more weeks I can be really consistent, I believe in my game enough to know that you know I can have solid weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the true differentiator might be you know truly putting myself in contention as often as I can and uh, that's a that's a physical and mental battle if you do that every single week um, so I'm, I'm you know that's the goal that we all set for each other, for ourselves mm -hmm. I'm sure um, but yeah ma majors are probably an emphasis for me just making sure that I'm you know trying to do everything that I can to peak at the right times and uh, you know obviously have my best my best at uh, just regular season events too, but having it all together uh, for a full year and being competitive at every event um, is, is a huge goal. Now a little bit more on the lighter side. Uh, we also debuted LPGA All Access, the CME Group Tour Championship, mm -hmm. where last night's episode we saw you in your uh, pickleball skills with Amy Olson and Sophia Popoff. First off, what was being a part of that experience like, even just for that pickleball segment? Um, and what do you think uh, something like that does for the LPGA? First of all, I think we need to skills might not be the rest the best word to use for my pickleball. Um, Amy and Sophia's yes, but it's just fun. Like I think, I think when, uh, they decided to do this, it was fun to get kind of a different perspective and, you know, what we do away from the golf course. And that is something that we've done, uh, for some weeks where we try to get out and do something different, play pickleball. Mm -hmm. Um, so to highlight, you know, you see Gabby working out, you see, uh, us playing pickleball, you see, you know, different things on the golf course. I think it's just good for our fans to engage and see what we're doing, what's going on. And, you know, um, it's, it's great for us as players to step away and do stuff that's, you know, a little out of our element, but it's also good, I think, for the, for people to see, you know, who we are as individuals, not just the golfers we are on the course. How, uh, I know you talk about not the skills part of it, <laughs> but how much will that experience help with the ping pong tournament later? I hope it helps. I haven't played. I, I played uh, yesterday for maybe just 10 to 15 minutes with some people, uh, just hoping to, you know, try to maybe knock a little bit of rust off. But um, I haven't played either very much recently, but hopefully, you know, just I can be competitive and maybe win a couple of games. Yeah. I know I know who uh, is, is there waiting for me if I were to win. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I've heard a lot of chatter. The ping pong tournament, for those that don't know, is something that's off the course this mm -hmm. week at the LPGA Drive-On Championship. Is it cool knowing that there's a little bit of fun off course where you get to kind of relieve the stress of competing each and week in and week out like that? Yeah, and I think us as competitors, if you put us on a ping pong table a pickleball court no matter what it is I feel like we're all super competitive um, so it's just fun to kind of have an avenue where we can step away and and you know get in a, a quick game and you know we see the bracket in our dining and and uh, yeah it's I think it's just a cool way for the LPGA to to step in this week and say hey we're going to do something a little different try to have a little fun get some player yeah. engagement caddy engagement um, so yeah, we'll we'll see how how far I can progress on that bracket. <laughs> you good, Greg? Do you have any questions? Did you ask mine? I did not. Okay. <clears throat> Are you going to Singapore and Thailand? No, sir. I am not. Okay. I am not. Um, is COVID or travel part of that reason, or um, you know, just not working to what your schedule would normally be, or not? Yeah, for me personally, um, as I've talked about the homesick portion for me, um, I've kind of gotten and I've the way I've played the last couple of years has given me some flexibility in how I approach my schedule. Um, and for me, it's it's viewing travel in a different way than I did 
when I was a rookie out here. And the strenuous travel for me gets uh, mentally and physically taxing. Um, it's, I will have to say maybe a part of it, I'm, I'm a type one diabetic. So when I travel, things get difficult. Um, diet gets difficult and protocols and um, I'm, I'm not sure what our bubble situation is going to look like, but it kind of just ties you down to what you can do. Um, so for me, I thought for, for looking, looking beyond the rest of the year, it was going to be better for me long term uh, to, to stay and, and not play those events. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Allie. We wish you best of luck in the ping pong tournament as thank well you. as this week. Thanks, Megan.